Hello from Tokyo. Today I'm going to continue using browns and the metallics like I did in the last painting and add this greenish blue as the cooler color instead of the silver from the last painting. The greenish blue from Amsterdam is a transparent color, so when blown out, it will create some lacing. And the Van Dyke brown also, but this is actually a semi opaque color, but it does create some lacing, as does this burnt sienna that is semi transparent. We've got gold, light gold from Amsterdam. This is copper and this is bronze. All those metallics do create some um, lacing. That's a great gold from Pebeo, but it does not create any lacing. Just the blues and actually all the other Amsterdam paints, all of these will create some lacing and really nice when they mix together. The name of this paint from Pebeo is Precious Iridescent Gold and as I was saying it doesn't lace up but it's this beautiful rich gold compared to the light gold from Amsterdam so I'm going to include it in the painting. The base paint is titanium white mixed with pouring medium to a thin consistency. In fact, I think it could be thinner. I have been going a little bit thicker with these base paints recently, but the thinner it is, although it dries quick, it makes it all flow much better. And the colors are always a little bit thicker, as you can see here. The medium for the base paint is 70% clear PVA glue and 30% water and very, very runny as you can see. And then for the colors, I add 10% Floetrol to make it a little bit thicker. So it's 60% glue, 10% Floetrol and 30% water. So it's time to lay down the base color and stretch it out. Once the canvas is covered and you've fixed the corners and the edges and you've torched out all the air bubbles, it's then time to lay down the colors. I'm going to blow out this section here and then add a little bit of blue and blow that out too to see how that will blend together. And, and then I will start working on the rest of the canvas. If you don't feel comfortable with blowing out the paint this way, you can always use a straw like I did there. And now I'm gonna start from the other corner. And today's painting, I'm actually laying down as much color as possible from the beginning like this. Sometimes I do it in sections, but today, no, I'm going full force. So when I started this painting and picked the colors, um, my intention was to have the main colors as the browns and the metallics and just have a hint of the greenish blue, but it blended so nicely that I ended up adding a lot more greenish blue than I'd originally intended. But I guess that's kind of the creative process, right? It changes a bit as you go along, which is the fun part. I'm gonna be a bit quiet now and come back to you when we do the balloon smashing. So I hope you enjoy the video today. It's now time to start balloon smashing. So here is the first one. 
and um, I do wipe the balloon after each smash as you can see there it's clean and I don't press too hard if you press lightly as you can see there you get um, larger petals I think if I'm doing a, a layered look for example um, smashing over flowers like on top of flowers already there sometimes I do a harder press for the thinner narrower petals just to add um, a contrast you know that can look pretty too but anyway generally I like to do these larger petals you can tell I went a little bit more on the blue slant here instead of um, keeping it mainly metallics and browns with a little bit of blue but I like it it's really pretty if you're not happy with the section you can always remove the paint with the paper towel or um, with a syringe but I would do it as early as possible before the surrounding paint starts to dry too much and as you can see there you can drag a bit of white through the flower to create the petal shape better For the center, my preference is to put paint directly on my finger and then dab on the flower center and keep on repeating the process. But sometimes I will use a dotting tool like I had done here um, and then uh, do dip my finger in the middle as well just to make it look a little bit more natural. So let's have a look at the wet finish. What do you think compared to the silver one? Do you prefer the blue? I do, I think. <laughs> I think they're very different I guess just that one color change I do love the lacing as always with these colors and the way the petals have split with the different colors you know with the white blue and oh you can even see that with the burnt sienna the centers can you see how I mean when you use the dotting tool it looks a little bit less organic right than if you put it directly on your finger still pretty though um yeah very nice petals really enjoying the colors there's some super interesting petals going on there really cool and that's a lovely color combination up there especially in that right corner but just here where there's like the brown and green clump in the middle or mainly brown I should have been brave enough just around there to do maybe another stamp, another smash. I'm so pleased though that this time I didn't like bump a corner or anything. So I was able to keep the, uh, the flow of the painting and not have to add anything extra this time. And now let's have a look at the dried version of the painting. You can see it shimmer a bit yeah very nice let's go in closer for a look at the individual flowers i love how it's dried it's done really well it's kept the colors as it was when it was wet there's nothing different there i like the frilliness of that petal there on the left isn't it lovely how the colors have split within the petals it's really pretty and my favorite is this one up here on the right in the corner I just love the colors how they've blended there I'm still unsure whether I should have added an extra flower there or whether it would have pulled up so much of the other paint or maybe added one there too not sure I really need to get back to doing more than one press you know um, for some reason I'm stuck on doing the one press recently now for the middles I ended up using a toothpick the sharper end 
to um, try and fix those dots, those circles, by splitting them. Um, so it kind of made more like a heart shape, but I feel it looks more natural than the dots. I also specifically added white to the centers, which isn't something that I usually do, but I think it worked here. Um, it brightened it up, and as you can see, that's how I dragged the toothpick through the burnt sienna and the white, like that. Overall, I'm finding this painting really colorful, which is strange because it's a brown and metallic spaced painting. You know, that's burnt sienna and a bit of blue. Now, there is one boo-boo in this painting, and that is a fly landed in that spot at some time when it was quite dry. So I had to dig him out, um, sadly, and um, add some more white. Here you can see the shine, especially of that Pepeo um, Precious Iridescent Gold. It may not uh, lace up, but it dries really vibrant, I think, or really sparkly. So there we have today's painting. I find it fascinating that it still looks kind of colorful to me, even if it's browns so and sepia colors. What did you think? Would you try this color scheme too? I hope you enjoyed the painting today and thank you so much for watching as always and see you in the next one. Bye!